third example, oh, now it starts getting heavy. I was keeping it light for now, but now we get to the heavy stuff. Surah Al-Jumu'ah. يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ Those of you who read the Qur'an regularly, all of you, know that Allah in many ayat, in the end of the ayah, Allah mentions two of his names. وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ عَزِيزٌ ذُو انتقام. You know that, right? Allah mentions two of his names many, many, many times. The ayah, I'll read it to you again. You tell me what's unique. يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ What's unique? Four, unique, isn't it? Four names. And I want to mention the basic meanings of these four names in order for you to appreciate something about this, these ayat. Al-Malik means the king. First one, going easy translation. Al-Malik means what? The king. Al-Quddus means the, the perfectly pure. The perfectly pure. And you can also say the source of all purity. The source of all purity. So Al-Malik means what? You tell me now. The king. Al-Quddus means what? Source of all purity. Al-Aziz is the third one. Al-Aziz means the authority. Al-Aziz, the authority. Al-Hakim has lots of meanings, but I'm only sharing one of each. Al-Hakim is the wise. The wise. Let's start over. What was the first name in Arabic? Al-Malik. What does it mean? The king. Al-Quddus. What does that mean? Huh? The source of all purity. The ultimately pure. The perfectly pure. Al-Aziz means what? The authority. Al-Hakim means what? Okay. The first ayah of Surah Al-Jumu'ah is about Allah. This ayah is about Allah. The second ayah of Surah Al-Jumu'ah is about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. First ayah about Allah, second ayah about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ The second ayah, I'll translate in a second, is about the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam One of my favorite ayat of the Qur'an Because in this ayah is a summary of the entire seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam In one ayah, the entire seerah The entire seerah Now in this one ayah Allah talks about the way that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam transformed society How was he able to do it? What steps did he follow? And Allah mentions four steps Allah mentions how many? Four steps. Hmm, where did we hear four before? How many names of Allah were mentioned? Four. And Allah, the Messenger follows how many? Four. four steps. Now let me take a step back. I'll stop and give you something to think about. Imagine you live in a time a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, three thousand years ago. You are traveling on your brand name donkey and you enter into a new kingdom. How do you know you've entered a kingdom at the border? How do you know you've entered a kingdom? What will you notice? Flags, statues, right? You'll notice soldiers that bear the mark of the king. You might notice a castle. You will see certain signs that this is a kingdom or this place has a king. You will notice the signs. You understand? A king is known by his symbols. You will not know a king unless he's wearing a crown. If a king's wearing a t-shirt, you're not going to know he's a king. He has to be wearing his robe and a crown. If a king is living in a third floor apartment, he's not a king. You got the wrong... <laughs> he can call himself royalty all he wants. You know. He has to have a castle. These are signs, pretty good indications that you are dealing with a king. So uh, the first point I want to make is a king is known by his signs. Okay. What was the first name of Allah mentioned? Al-Malik. What does it mean? Allah says about the Prophet wasallam that he does four things, yes? The first thing is, يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ He reads on to the people the king's signs. How is a king known? By his signs. And the messenger tells the people his signs. Notice his kingdom. You see those mountains over there? It's part of his kingdom. You see that sun over there? It's part of his kingdom. 
That's how you know you're dealing with a king. You see the stars at night? That's, that's the kingdom of Allah. You know? He's known by his signs. Number two. Number two. What was the second name of Allah, by the way? Quddus. In the ayah, what was it? Al Quddus. What does it mean? I forgot. Source of all? The second thing the Messenger does, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ayah says, wa him, and he purifies them. He reads the, the king's signs onto them, and he what? Purifies them. What was the second name of Allah? Source of all purity. You see a connection? The third thing, before I tell you about the third thing, Allah says He's the ultimate authority. You remember that? Where do laws come from? Laws come from an authority. In a house, the rules come from the parents. They cannot come from the child. Because the parents have what? Authority. In a classroom, the rules come from the teacher. They don't come from the students. Because the teacher has what? Authority. In a country, the rules come from the government. They, don't, they come from the people making the laws, the courts or whoever else. They don't come from the employee. Because who has the authority? The courts do. You understand? The laws come from the authority. Allah says, وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ He teaches them the book. And the word book in Arabic, kitab, is used in Arabic literature for law. So it's like saying He teaches them the law. And law can only be given by the proper authority. Al-Aziz is the only one who can make kitab. You cannot have kitab without izzah. You cannot have law without... And by the way, the book, even in English literature, we say, in, for example, in American English, the judge threw the book at him. You know, that does not mean that the judge got angry during the case, took a phone book, <laughs> and hit the plaintiff on the head with a book. What does it mean? It means the judge used the full extent of the law against this person. He threw the book at him. That's what it means. Or when someone says, I'm going to do this by the book, what does it mean? I'm going to do this according to the law. That's what I'm going to do. That's by the book. You follow? So, Al Aziz is the authority, and the messenger teaches people the law from the authority. What was the last name of Allah that was mentioned in this sequence? Al Malik, Al Quddus, Al Aziz, Al Hakim, the wise. Allah says, وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ He teaches them wisdom. Where does wisdom come from? It comes from the wise. Four names of Allah in one ayah. Four activities of the Messenger in the second ayah. And they're each correlated perfectly. And it's not like... It took me 20 minutes to explain this to you. But Allah just says it. He just says it. What human being is able to think, I just said four names of Allah, I should correlate each of them with a verb and an act and a, you know, a principle that corresponds perfectly in sequence to what I just said. Beyond human capability. We're not able to do that. And Allah just, and we just read right through it. We read right through these miracles, right through these powerful observations, and we, most of the time we don't even realize what we just read. Most of the time we don't even taste what was just said. And wallahi, if you do, you're just left there like Allahu Akbar. Like you're just you're left overwhelmed. This was was my was that my second or my third example? That was my third example. 